the traveling these countries, I met different kinds of people from different backgrounds, different race, different religion, different thoughts, and different behaviors. And um, I, I spent a lot of time. I stayed in temples. I didn't when I was traveling. I didn't stay in hotels or like that. I stayed I, in temples around the world. I stayed in mosques. I stayed in uh, churches and um, camped in parks and, and whatever worked. And uh, what I learned is we all are unique. We, each of us are different and it's wonderful that we are different. We may spring from the same oneness of our interiority, but as human beings, as individuals, we are different. We are unique and that's what is beautiful about us. For example, anything that you find unique, for example, you have a unique watch. You are very close to that. You love that, you value that, you don't have problem with that. Same like that, we all are unique. And if you enjoy that uniqueness in all the individuals, you are one step near to the oneness. We talk a lot about oneness, and I think it's not eight in the human experience to, to enjoy the oneness. First, we have to enjoy the uniqueness, that every human being is different, every human being is unique. And if we appreciate that, then only we can be near to oneness. That would bring us to oneness. And let's just think beyond that. If you think beyond that, we are just one pure life. One pure life. Let's close our eyes and think for a second. <clears throat> think about animals, think about plants, think about trees or whatever, every living organism. Think about anything and don't forget to include yourself. And think, we are all just one pure life with the same fundamentals. And that's how it makes us one. We are all one, and that is one pure life. The, and the only thing that uh, the only thing that we human beings have, other than if if you look at the trees, if you look at the birds, plants, they're always happy. They have no choice to be sad. <laughs> they're always happy, and that's why we enjoy looking them. Because we enjoy looking at birds and trees because we they're happy all the time. They have no choice. But the human being, the only thing that human being has, we do not do anything different than those animals or plants. We, they, they sleep, they eat, they reproduce, we do the same things. The only thing we do is we do the same thing in, at a conscious level. We human beings have that freedom of consciousness. So it's up to our control how you want to use that freedom. If you want to be joyful, you have the freedom. If you want to be Miserable, you have that freedom. We do the same things, but we do the same thing in a, and sometimes it's dangerous that we have this freedom of consciousness because you know, you've seen different things happening around the world. And I think as a human being, we should make a proper use of that, that freedom, that level of consciousness. So let's make proper use of our consciousness to create a better world to live. Let's enjoy this freedom of consciousness to be joyful, compassionate, loving and a better human being. There is something that I read um, in a book um, which was written by a great philosopher and a spiritual master from India, uh, Bhagwan Sri Rajnis, who is also known as Oso. And uh, I would like to share that with you. He says, we don't need to change the world. All we need is just change ourselves. And that's the starting of changing the world because we are part of the world. If even a single human being changes, the change will radiate to thousands and thousands of others. You will become a triggering point for a revolution which can give birth to a totally new kind of human being. Thank you, and namaste. The soul in me honors the soul in you.